Hi, Todd Vandenberg here with Vandenberg Capital Management and the final Uncommon Sense update for 2022. So there's no way to sugarcoat it. It was a bad year. Uh, it started off with such promise. Uh, you know, the, the markets looked good, the economy looked good, but then we had a bunch of government action, both uh, legislative and bureaucratic, that, um, you know, caused a lot of problems. Uh, we've got the, you know, the, the federal government, uh, you know, has passed, you know, many spending bills that have flooded the economy with dollars, largely uh, causing the inflationary environment that we're in. And now this year, we've got the Federal Reserve uh, raising interest rates at an unprecedented rate. And, and that's causing a, a, a contraction in the economy. It's, it's basically, you know, uh, stopped residential home construction completely, which these, these continued interest rate hikes are just going to sort of find their way through the rest of, of, of the economy. If, as you imagine, right, if, if residential construction stops, then all of the construction workers who might be buying things at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever, right, you know, they're going to stop. And, and so this, it, it hasn't even, you know, found its way fully through the economy. But, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve has made it clear they're going to continue to raise interest rates um, at least for the, the first part of 2023. And so we just expect to see continued slowdown. And, and um, our hope is that they don't, you know, raise rates to such an extent that, you know, we, we, we go beyond a recession to something worse. Um, so, uh, you know, stock market results so far year to date, you know, just not good. Uh, the Dow was down 10%, S&P down 20%. And the Nasdaq about 35%. So, what that tells us is that if you lacked diversification and just owned the 30 stocks of the Dow, which we don't recommend for anybody, um, you know you were only down 10%. If you owned you know the 500 stocks of the S&P, uh, not the index, uh, you know you're down 20. And if you own the Nasdaq, which has a lot of smaller stocks in it, smaller tech stocks in it, uh, it has some big ones too, but a lot of small stocks. Uh, you're down 35. And so, so it, it, it was just a bad year for the markets and, and the markets were just reflecting what was going on in the economy. And so what we're looking for in 2023, first off is, you know, the election is over. Uh, the Republicans have control of the House, which means they have control of the purse. Uh, the Democrats control the Senate and the White House. So that means we have divided government and you know the stuff that we're likely to see in 2023 and 2024 are things that both sides hopefully agree on, and that and, you know there aren't going to be many of those because you know the you know, the two political parties don't agree on much, but that does mean that you know the less that the government does, the more the rules of the road don't change, and that's actually good for the economy because then you know publicly traded companies can just. Uh, you know, do what, whatever they think they need to do to grow their business, which is their objective, uh, without having to worry about the government, you know, pulling the rug out from under them with some new regulation or, you know, something that makes it harder for them to do business. Uh, you know, the Federal Reserve is not a bunch of elected officials. So, you know, that's uh, a little tougher to control. But uh, our hope is that they see that they've, they've, they've raised rates pretty rapidly. And even Chairman Powell has said, you know, he, he doesn't believe that raising rates will lower the price of food or lower the price of gas, but it is going to slow the economy down to the point where uh, demand decreases. And if you decrease demand, then inflation should come down. And we've been sort of seeing that the last couple of months as inflation is sort of slowly pulled back from their from the highs. Um, inflation's still ridiculously high, uh, but you know it is it is starting to come back, but not because the economy is getting better, but because the Federal Reserve is intentionally killing demand by raising interest rates. So what do we expect in 2023? Well, first off, not much. Um, you know the, the markets are roughly fairly valued, maybe a little undervalued right now. Because uh, you know they've been trading within a range, and uh, but you know let's just pretend that they're you know fairly valued for right now. So uh, on average, you know the w when you look at like an earnings per share valuation, the markets are trading at about what they should be considering the historical average. 
but historical averages are just that, right? So the markets could trade down from here because sometimes, you know, averages being averages, sometimes the markets trade below the average. It could also trade a little above because sometimes the markets trade above the average. So uh, unless we see some slowing down from the Federal Reserve and, and, and a little more economic activity as, you know, private, privately uh, uh, held, or sorry, public, publicly traded companies, um, you know, start to adapt to the environment that we're going to have for the next two years, we're not expecting a lot of gains in the market. You know, you know, we could see us maybe four ish percent higher, four to six percent on, on the top end. Now, hey, it, it, if something surprises us and the markets go up 10 or 15 percent, that would be a shock. But we're not going to complain about it. But we're not going to be investing that way. Um, we're sort of looking at a, at a you know, four ish percent return uh, in the markets. So we're looking for returns in other places. We're looking for dividends. So we want high quality dividend funds and stocks. And we're looking for you know, uh, interest from maybe you know, treasuries and other you know, uh, fixed income investments where you can earn roughly a 4% and, and take some of the volatility uh, you know, out, of, out of your you know, the people's portfolios. Because that's really been what's been causing people a lot of anguish is you know, the markets actually aren't down as, as much today as they were during the heat of, of the pandemic, you know, early in 2020. Um, but it's just the volatility, you know, when, when, when the markets are jumping so wildly up and down and up and down, that just causes people to be anxious. So what we're going to be doing in 2023 is, again, as I said, um, uh, high quality fixed income that pays a, a nice yield. We're looking for four or above. Uh, we're looking for dividend producing uh, you know, funds and stocks. Um, and we're still going to be maintaining fairly high cash balances, you know, just to make sure that something doesn't surprise us. You know, there's still a lot of craziness going on. You know, if, if Russia shuts the oil off to Europe, that could, that could cause all kinds of craziness um, in, in the supply chain issues. Cause you know, I mean, we, we still do get stuff from Europe. There, there's no telling what China is going to do. You know, the, they manipulate their currency and, and they've been locking down their economy for, you know, for COVID reasons. So there's so many unknowns that, that we want to just look to not be greedy in 2023, have an have a equity-based position so that if the markets do go up, you can, you can get some of that gain. But, you know, take, take some wins in dividend-producing stocks and funds and uh, some fixed income. Just one side comment. Uh, I mentioned the performance of the Dow, the, you know, the S and P, and the Nasdaq. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people who were, you know, big Bitcoin advocates, and you know, the Bitcoin fared even worse. So it, it basically started the year at about forty-six thousand, and it ended right now at about sixteen thousand. That's a sixty-five percent loss. So all the people that we all know who talked about how we need to do, you know, uh, you know, Bitcoin investing. Uh, and they're still talking that way, like, well, now you really got to own it. It just feels a little like they want people to buy in now because they're trying to get the price back up to where they entered at 30, 35, 40,000 um, because they've really lost their shirts. So um, as many know, uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of, of uh, digital currencies. Uh, they're, to me, they're, they're more like wampum. I'm not going to define or explain what wampum is for those that don't know. But you can you can look it up and um, you, you'll see that wampum is basically nothing. Um, uh, it's something that has perceived value but no actual value, and that pretty much to me defines uh, Bitcoin and digital currency in general. So again, uh, uh, we're not pessimistic. We don't see that the the U.S. economy you know collapsing, but you know it would not shock us in 2023 if we enter into like a real recession given the Fed's uh, actions. Um, it's just that we're we're watching pretty closely to make sure that they don't push it too far because then we could see some real you know, displacement in, in the markets uh, as, as, as the economy just you know, and demand just gets killed. So there's no guarantee that that has to happen. And, and the Fed did you know, reduce the rate at which it's been uh, you know, in increasing rates this last time. So it, at least it looks like they're, they're, they're recognizing that their actions that's possible to go too far.
So uh, be disciplined in 2023. Don't be greedy. Don't be trying to hit a home run. I keep hearing these radio ads talking about how, you know, somebody made 90% in nine months. You know, if somebody is able to make 90% in nine months con continuously, I want to see him on Ford's, Ford's top 100 list of the most of the wealthiest people in the planet on the planet because you know it, if you can do that then just sell everything make your 90 percent every nine months and in five years you're a billionaire um, but none of these people are so don't be lured in by greed uh, and and don't fall victim to fear just be disciplined um, if you're you know working and have a, a 401k or a SEP or an IRA and, and you're contributing Contribute regularly. Don't wait till the end of the year to dump all your money in. Try to, if, if you can do it with every paycheck, that's just a great thing for you right now because even with the markets down, it's a great buying opportunity if your retirement is you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now. And if you're already in retirement, you know, keep plenty of cash. Make sure you're earning the best possible yields. Right now, that's north of 3%. And, you know, have a little money that, that, that is, you know, invested in high quality dividend producing uh, stocks uh, or, or funds. And, and, you know, by the end of 2023, you should roughly have like a four to 6% yield uh, unless something else, you know, unprecedented or unexpected happens. So uh, again, not pessimistic, not overly optimistic. Uh, I wish we had, uh, you know, a better year planned but we're going to be watching really, really closely because, you know, now with uh, the, you know, the Federal Reserve starting to ease up, maybe things get better, maybe they get worse. But the only way that you can adapt is if you're watching super closely. And that's what we do. So we wish everybody a very happy new year uh, and a, you know, a happy, healthy and prosperous 2023. So if anybody has any questions about this or any other financial matter, I'm always here. You know, email me, text me. Uh, you know, post a message to, to this video. I'm happy to respond to any questions, but that was your update. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like, give us a share, and I'll be back again next year with another Uncommon Sense update. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to be the first to hear of more Uncommon Sense updates like these, please click the subscribe button below. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again.